Good morning, Kingdom Saints, subscribers, viewers. I hope everyone's having a blessed morning. I know some of y'all are probably sleeping right now, but I wake up at 3. Every day I wake up at 3 and I start my day off. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I wanted to discuss a topic that I think is kind of important. And I took some notes down. Because we're going to be confronted by many, many people in your walk, in your ministry. And um, even when, even if you don't have a ministry or even if you just not saved you're still going to come across these people and these people are the false prophets the false prophets um i know somebody actually i know quite a few people quite a few people who to give themselves titles some of them don't have titles but they're knowledge, knowledgeable about scriptures. They know the Bible like, phew, I can just uh, quote a scripture and they'll tell me what, from their head, you know, they'll tell me what scripture, what where to find it in the Bible. And um, they know the Bible word for word. They know the Bible back to back and they walk around with a Bible and they claim that they're saved and this and that, you know what I'm saying? But just because they know scriptures and they have a Bible wherever they go doesn't mean they're saved you know what I'm saying the, Jesus is the word of God because Jesus is the word you know what I'm saying you can know scriptures you can know the Bible left to right you can memorize it you know what I'm saying but you gotta live by the word you gotta be obedient to the word you gotta obey the word Got to love God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people claim to know scriptures. So what you? So what if you know scriptures? Big deal. You're not acting according to scriptures. You're not believing and acting out on your belief. Because a lot of people are just walking around and claiming to be saved. And they know the Bible. They know scriptures. And, Wolf in sheep's clothing, you know what I'm saying, false prophets. For the Lord said, many will come in my name. Many will come in my name. And um, they'll be like, uh, 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 Lord, have we not prophesied and baptized and cast out demons in your name? And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So let's go over a few uh, a few quips that I have here. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Psalm 119, 105. You know, uh, it's like um, when you know, when you follow the word and you live in obedience to God and you're a true Christian. It's living and it's active in you. You can see it every day. You don't you don't strive to do things of the world anymore. You strive and you wake up every day, every morning. And you have the kingdom of God on your mind. You know what I'm saying? You have the kingdom of God. You have Jesus on your mind. You have Jesus stayed on your mind. Am I right about it? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Yes, you have to follow that path that God has outlined for you in your life. 
Every word of God proves true. He's, he is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Romans 12, 2. Here's a, uh, here's a good one right here. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. And for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Well, so to all the uh, people who claim to be Christian and just claim that the Bible is the word of God, the word of God is what God puts in your heart from scriptures, of course. But just because you have the Bible in your hand and you're walking around with it doesn't mean you're saved. That's my point. Just because you have scriptures, just because you have a Bible and you know scriptures does not mean that you're saved. Faith is what saves you. For we are, for we are saved by grace through faith not of our own works, so that no man may boast. You, you, however, let's go to John 17. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. You have to have the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, within you in order to be saved. Yes, because it's easy to say, well, I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I, I believe. I believe in Jesus. And then you go to the club, get drunk, smoke cigarettes, fornicate. That's not believing. You have to act on your belief. You have to act on your belief. That's like somebody saying, well, I believe that the world is flat. Prove it. Prove it. You have to act on your belief because if you act on your belief, you can prove it because you've done your research. You went to all your resources. You looked it up. You studied. And um, we are known by our fruits. But the fruit of the fruit of the spirit is love. Love, because if you if you have Jesus, you have love. You know what I'm saying? That's the fruit. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Romans eight verse nine. So shall my word be that that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Proverbs 25, 2. Amen. So it's a, it's a big difference between knowing the word and being the word. Everybody uh, can know the word, but are you living the word? Are you doing what God has planned for you? God's will in your life. Are you walking in the spirit? Or are you just talking in the spirit? You know what I'm saying? It's easy to walk the walk and talk the talk. Very easy. A lot of these prosperity preachers are doing that right now, fooling millions. But see, that's Satan's plan. That's Satan's plan. These people who are 
uh, uh, in the in the um, claim to be Christians. These these ones that are doing the prosperity gospel and the false doctrines. Satan is walking through them. Satan is walking through them. Oh, they're not gonna. They're not gonna claim that they're possessed. They're not gonna claim that they're under the influence of Satan and his demons. They're not gonna claim it because, of course, they want your money. That's all they want is your money. Joe Osteen, pff, don't even bother with that. Don't even bother listening to him. He's not even a, a, a Christian. He's a motivational speaker. That's all he is. And he's making millions and millions and millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? He might have billions for all I know. But he's making a lot of money. He's taking their money. But God has a plan for them. God has a plan for them. They're going to feel God's wrath on judgment. You know what I'm saying? They're going straight to the abyss. You know when you play Monopoly? And you get that go to jail call where they're going to hell. And do not pass Jesus. <laughs> Let me stop because it's not funny. We should be praying for those people. You know what I'm saying? We should be praying for them. You know, because they're, they're lost. They're misguided. They're deceitful. They're under the schemes of the evil one. He shoots those fiery darts at them every day. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. They love it. They love it. You know what I'm saying? But they're already walking in condemnation. They're already condemned. As God says, you know, they're already condemned. So Creflo Dollar, Joe Osteen, what's that other one's name? Uh, the most, Benny Hinn, he's another one. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 Kenneth Copeland. You know, I watched a video of Kenneth, with Kenneth Copeland on one of his uh, shows. I call it shows because it's really not a service. It's a show, just a show, show and tell. And um, he was preaching and you know, he he has the most demonic look on his face. Yes, I, I wonder about him. I think while he's out there preaching, where well, he's not preaching, but while he's out there doing his thing, I think the demon is actually him because you could look at him closer. You could see it in his eyes. You could see it in his expressions. You know, and him being calling himself a Christian, why is it that he's always angry at people? When this lady was interviewing him and he got angry at her when she was asking about his private jets and his mansions and the money and whatnot that he makes that he's getting from all these people from the blind. And he actually got mad and said, no, you didn't point a finger at him. Is that, is that a Christian? Is that how a Christian acts? I, I don't see, I don't see Jesus in him. I see demons in him. That's what I see. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so he's, he's out there on the, on the stage. I call it a stage. It's not a church. He's out there on the stage and he says, show me the money. Show me the money. I'm like, I'm going to show you the scriptures. I'm going to show you the Bible. That's what I'm going to show you. I ain't showing him no money. I mean, but but, but they throwing money out there. They throwing money out there. And he's all dancing in the money, jumping in the money. Uh, okay. I don't need to say nothing else. I need to say that. Be careful. Be careful who you follow or listen to. Because Satan has planted these demons, these demonic doctrines out there to steer you away from Jesus. You know what I'm saying? The only, the only uh, doctrine you need is Jesus. The only doctrine you need right now is Jesus. You don't need to listen to any of these false teachers, false preachers, false prophets, false, false anything. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to lead you straight to hell. Along with the millions and millions in this world that are headed in that direction. So take heed to my words because we are coming at a time where many will be deceived, even the elect. The 
heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Isaiah 55 verse 11. The heart is very deceitful since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve, since Satan was let loose in the world and he became the king of this world. This world has been in such disarray since then. But we have a savior that we can call on and that we can count on and that we can trust to give us salvation, to rescue us from ourselves, to rescue us from ourselves. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Second Peter, Second Peter 2, verse 1 through 22. And here's a, the most important one. This is the clincher. This is my ending. This is my ending scripture. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. Philippians 2 verse 11. This sums up the topic. This sums up everything that we just, I just discussed with everybody here. You know what I'm saying? We live in a world right now with false heresies, false doctrines, false prophets, false teachers, false everything. Don't follow them. Follow the word of God. Study to show thyself approved before God. A workman who needed not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That means knowing God's word, rejecting the world's traditions and the, and the false doctrines. Amen. So yeah, just be cautious, be careful. Don't go to, don't be going to these mega churches because all they want is your money. They don't care about you. Matter of fact, they don't even know you and they don't even know your name unless you're tied. That's a shame, unless you're tied. And a lot of times when you do tied, they still don't know you. They don't care about you. They don't care about nothing but themselves and what they can get from you. Believe me, that's all they want is your money. They don't care nothing about you. That's all they want is your money. And the sad part is, a lot of those people that are hiding to these mega churches, these false doctrines, these prosperity gospels, they tied and when they're in need, they can't even go to the church that they belong to because they're not going to give them their money. Their money's gone. You just pay somebody's rent. You pay somebody's mortgage. You just bought somebody a new car. You know what I'm saying? You just bought somebody uh, new rings. Um, 
you're just taking money out of money, hard earned money that that you've earned, and you're just giving it away. That's the same thing as giving it away. Know what I'm saying? So don't be taken. So don't be uh, fooled by these that by these. And it's going to increase before Jesus comes. Oh, Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait for my Savior. I can't wait to see Jesus face to face so I can give him a warm embrace and he can take me with him to that heavenly place. Amen. That's what I live for. That's what I live for. To live, to die is to gain, and to gain is to live. You want me to explain that to you? You want me to dissect it for you? Okay. To die is to gain. Which means when you walk with Jesus, when you're a Christian, when you're born again, when he, you give Jesus your all, your flesh has died. Your flesh is dead. You're not of the world. You of the spirit. You have gained eternal life. My flesh died. I'm no longer of the world. I'm like a dead man walking in this world. But God uses this vessel to do his will. God uses this vessel to teach, preach, and anything else that's for the kingdom of God and for reaching out. You know what I'm saying? So yes, to die is to gain Jesus. When you die to the world, when you're dead to the world, you gain Jesus, you gain eternal life. Because scripture says that our spirit, those who accept Jesus, our spirits are seated with God the Father in heavenly places. Oh, yeah. To die is to gain. You get it now? And it's the best thing in the world. And and to gain is to live. So when you gain, when you gain the treasures of heaven, when you gain eternal life, when you gain salvation through Christ Jesus, when you gain all of these wonderful things, to gain is to live. You are a new creation. You will live eternally with Jesus. To, to, to gain is to live. So, why feel dead? Oh, dead, where is thy sting? Jesus said, I have overcome death, and so shall you. Jesus said, I have risen from the grave, and so shall you. Yes, you will be with Jesus in heaven. There is no death for us. Who cares about the death we have in this world? Scripture says we're going to be persecuted. We're going to be hated. Jesus said to the disciples, a prophet is not welcome in his hometown. Look what happened. Look what they did to Jesus. His own people persecuted and crucified him. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus had to fulfill that prophecy. You know what I'm saying? God the Father made manifest in the flesh. A lot of people, Muslims, Hindus, they don't understand that the Creator came down to creation. And they don't understand that when Jesus was praying to the Father, they don't under, they think that God was praying to God. They think, oh, what kind of God is that that prays to himself? No, because they don't understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They don't understand what that is. God came down from heaven 
to the seed because if God came down himself, believe me, nobody can see God and live. No one can see God and live. So he had to come down as a man to the seed of David, from the lineage of David. So Jesus was a man on earth, but he's always been the word since the beginning of time. Jesus has always been around since the foundations of the world, since the beginning of time. You know what I'm saying? Even before the foundations of the world, he always existed because he was, he is, and he is to come. So, Jesus, in the form of a man, was God the Father. Inside of that man, in his, in, in his spirit, was God the Father. That's the only way he could have came down here. And the reason he did that is because there was no other way for us to be redeemed. There was no other way for our sins to be forgiven. There was no other way for us to have salvation without Jesus. God the Father said, okay, this is their last chance. Because actually, Sodom and Gomorrah, God was, God repented that he made man. God was in sorrow. God cried. He was sad that he made man because we betrayed him. We were so disobedient. He was like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I created them to be and to do. So God said, Noah, build an ark. And he was the only one, him and seven others. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And um, the worst is yet to come. Because scripture says that it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse than all. So yes, God the Father came down to earth. Man made, um, God made manifest in the flesh. And people don't understand that. They think that Jesus was just a wanderer, a great teacher, a prophet. But see, they don't fully understand the word. You have to read the word and let the word, let the word sink in every day. You know what I'm saying? You got to. A good idea to do, here's something you can do. Before you open your Bible, before you read the Word, study the Word, pray. Pray in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will guide you and will break it down for you, stuff down for you. You will learn more about God. You will learn more about His Son. And you will know that Jesus was always around. Always around. Because he's the lamb slain who overcame and is coming back once again to reclaim the kingdom of heaven. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. Pray in the Holy Spirit before you open your Bible and read it. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to spend more time reading scriptures than going to these false churches. Don't worry about church. Because you can have church in your heart. Wherever you are, you can have church in your heart, on your lunch break, at work, at home. Wherever you are, you can have church in your heart. Just because you go to a church doesn't mean you're saved. Just, be just because you belong to a congregation doesn't mean you're saved. You know what church is for? Church is not for salvation. Church can't save you. Church is for fellowshipping and learning more about the Word of God, learning more about scriptures. You know what I'm saying? You know, most of the times, if the church isn't clean, the pastor's not clean. That's why. 
You can have church in your heart. You can study the word. You know what I'm saying? And you'll see, you'll actually see your faith getting stronger and stronger and your wisdom getting stronger and stronger. You know what I'm saying? So take no heed. Don't worry about church. Oh, I have to belong to a church in order to be saved. No. You don't need to be in a church to be saved. You are saved by grace through faith. You are saved by grace through faith. What is grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's grace. What is the gospel? God's only son provides eternal life. God's only son provides eternal life. That's the gospel. The gospel is all about Jesus. The gospel is not about the world. The gospel is not about what you can gain. The gospel is not about you having this and that and these materialistic things. That's not the gospel because all of those things are temporary. Your life here in this world is temporary. Your family is temporary. Your bank account is temporary. But Jesus is permanent. The gospel is all about Jesus. We, we, we're under the new covenant. The new covenant. The Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament concealed. We are in the New Covenant with Jesus right now. And there's only two things that you got to remember. Two laws. L love God the Father with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second one is just as great as the first one. Love thy neighbor, I ask thyself. Those are the two commandments you need to have in your head at all times. Don't worry about the Mosaic law. That laws, those laws were about sin and death. We serve Jesus. We serve a, a loving Comforter, a loving redeemer, a loving savior who wants us to show the love of Jesus to everybody, to everyone, not condemnation, not condemnation, love. I know you might see things on TV or in the world that discuss you, you know, but you still got to love that person by evangelizing to them, showing them the love of Jesus, no matter what. No matter what. When you show the love of Jesus, the demons hate it. They really do, and they do manifest. Believe me, I've seen it while I'm out on the streets evangelizing. Oh, do I have stories to tell you guys about that? You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of stories to tell you about that if anybody should ask but it's not something I dwell on what I dwell on is the love of Jesus and, and going out and reaching out outreach whatever evangelizing whatever fellowshipping you know what I'm saying all these things matter to me more than what used to matter to me back in the past you know what I'm saying and I don't even miss none of the stuff my old life I don't miss none of it. I don't miss. I look forward to the kingdom of God. I look forward to coming, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And whatever I can do to bring you or anybody else to Jesus, I'm going to go out and do it. When I say you, I don't mean you. But hopefully you come to Jesus after viewing my, my videos, you know what I'm saying, if you're not saved. You know what I'm saying? So, matter of fact, if you don't know Jesus and your life is just full of turmoil, if you're in despair, come to Jesus. 
gave your life to Jesus. He gave his life for us so that we can live and be free in him. Give your life to Jesus today. Today could be your day of salvation. Just come to Jesus. He'll take away all of that despair. He'll take away all of your problems. He will redeem you. Jesus said, I will cast your sins into the depths of the sea and remember them no more. Jesus did not come to condemn you. He came to save you. Amen. Give your life to Jesus today. Become a new creation. Become a new creation. Because Jesus really loves you. He really loves you. And he does not want you to perish. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. So that those who believe in him may not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus said, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Amen. So come to Jesus today and watch how your life will change. You'll be transformed. I am a good example of it. He has changed my life. He has given me a new direction, a new purpose, a new meaning, and he has given me eternal life with him. And I hold him to his promises because God is not a man and that he should lie. Am I right about it? All righty then. One fate, one baptism, one God. Don't forget to subscribe there, 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 boy. I love you all, saints. Thanks for watching.